Hello, welcome back to the shed. Today I'll be making some birds on the bandsaw. I don't really have a plan, so you could say I'm winging it. The first thing I'm going to try is make a template out of this bird shape and cut it out of this plywood. That looks okay, but it is a bit flat. Moving on from the success we had with the version 1 template, I'm now going to add another dimension to this bird with a top-down view. So now I'm just going to tape it back together. cut out this template. Hey! Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't look like a book. That looks sh Moving on from my success with version 1 and failure with version 2, we have 2.1, which should give us a wider belly for our bird. That looks better. I'm using an 80 grit sanding pad on my drill to round off the corners and give this bird some shape. I've sanded half of this bird and it looks quite nice compared to the original bandsaw cuts. But it doesn't have wings. So, moving on from our success with version 1 our failure with version 2 and our success with 2.1 we have version 3 version 3 has a side template a top template and also a front template I'll be shaping and sanding these little birds by hand because I think machine sanding's just a little bit too aggressive. I'm planning on hanging these birds using fishing line and if I use the same template the birds will all look the same and that'll be boring. These templates show different wing positions and represent four stages of a bird in flight from wings up to wings down. New templates are on, let's cut them out. I'm using the same process as last time, cut one template out, tape it together and cut another. Now the birds are all cut out, let's compare them to our original drawings. I need somewhere to hang my birds, and my first idea was to make a ring shape. My second idea was to make an octagon. Since I have eight birds to hang, each point of the octagon will have a bird. 
I'm making my octagon out of two squares. In particular, two walnut squares. If I make my squares using mitre joints, they'll look fancy, but I'll be drilling holes for the fishing line straight through the join line. I think the best solution for all involved is to use lap joints instead. That way the holes won't interfere with the joint. I'm using a marking gauge for the cut lines and reinforcing them with a chisel. Using the bandsaw to remove most of the waste. And then finish up with a bit of chisel work. Next, onto the glue up. Nothing too stressful here. Here are my two squares. I could just glue them like this. But remember back in the day when I said, I think the best solution for all involved is to use lap joints instead. So I guess I'm doing that. This fishing line is 025 millimeters thick. I'm going to need a different drill. These drill bits are incredibly small. I've already broken two of them just by looking at them. Well, three times the charm. Getting the fishing line for those tiny holes was an absolute pain. But having said that, look at this thing. That was fun. It's starting to rain now, so I'm going to go put the kettle on. Bye!